A film review is just one person's opinion of a movie, but it has the potential to start a firestorm on the internet. In this day and age, fans have become obsessed with what critics think of the most anticipated blockbusters, and any pundit who says the next comic book movie isn't the best thing since sliced bread draws the ire of audiences. Wild accusations of bribes, petitions to shut down Rotten Tomatoes, and even death threats have become far too commonplace these days. But moviegoers aren't the only ones who will voice their displeasure with critics. Actors and directors never like it when their work is ripped to shreds, so sometimes they strike back. Here are 10 actors and directors who publicly fought with critics. Suicide Squad Many hoped David Ayer's Suicide Squad would be the critical hit the DCEU needed, but it proved to be just as polarizing as its predecessors. As the negative reviews stacked up, the cast and crew defended their movie. Cara Delevingne claimed that critics don't like superhero movies, and David Ayer reignited the old I make movies for fans, not critics debate, implying that reviewers can't also be fans of the material. Actor Jay Hernandez took it another step forward by saying, the critics can kiss my ass. They were all obviously frustrated, but at least Suicide Squad is a box office hit. Sort of like a team. Earth's Mightiest Heroes type thing. The Avengers. Those who feel Marvel is in the pocket of film critics should give A.O. Scott a call. The New York Times reviewer was one of the few who didn't like the first Avengers movie, saying it was full of bloated cynicism. Does mother know you wear as her drapes? And grinding, hectic emptiness. Many disagreed with this take including Samuel L. Jackson. The actor took to Twitter to say Scott needed a new job, one he could actually do. Scott and Jackson went back and forth on social media for a while before they let it go. The Avengers is considered one of the best superhero films of all time, so it's safe to say Jackson won. Let's do this. The Lone Ranger. This reboot of a classic property was a notorious box office bomb, and it certainly didn't help matters that the word of mouth was fairly toxic. The reviews for Lone Ranger were pretty awful, and stars Johnny Depp and Army Hammer took issue with the levels of criticism lobbied at the film. Depp felt that a majority of the reviews were written months before the movie premiered, and Hammer felt that reviewers were purposely lashing out against it due to its budgetary woes. The two blamed critics for the Lone Ranger flopping, but critics were quick to point out that they didn't make the final product. Godzilla Roland Emmerich typically delivers big-scale spectacle, but he's hardly a critical darling. The late, great Roger Ebert frequently gave Emmerich's films negative reviews, which rubbed the filmmaker the wrong way. For his Godzilla reboot in 1998, Emmerich created the character of Mayor Ebert, an ineffectual politician whose actions endangered the people of New York. To top it off, the mayor had an advisor named Gene, after Ebert's partner Gene Siskel. It definitely wasn't a subtle jab, and it's one Ebert found amusement with joking that he thought he'd get killed by Godzilla. Neither Siskel nor Ebert gave Godzilla two thumbs up. This is horseshit! Titanic James Cameron's romantic drama epic tied a record by winning 11 Oscars in 1997, but not everyone was a fan of the film. The LA Times' Kenneth Turin was particularly critical of it, saying that it reeks of phoniness and lacks even minimal originality. Cameron wrote a lengthy tired against Turin, ultimately accusing the reviewer of insulting the movie-going public with his feelings on Titanic. Turin smartly stayed out of it, but when the heat died down, he then claimed that Cameron had written to the Times in an attempt to get Turin fired. The critic got to keep his job, but it's safe to say he won't be exchanging pleasantries with Cameron anytime soon. Worship me, or be enslaved! Gods of Egypt Even before this film came out, Gods of Egypt stirred up controversy due to its whitewashed cast. When it finally premiered, the movie was a forgettable box office disaster that hardly impressed critics. Director Alex Proyas took great offense to the panning of his movie and fired back on Facebook. In his meltdown, he referred to movie pundits as deranged idiots and diseased vultures, while calling them less than worthless. He also accused many of writing their reviews to fit into the general consensus, an erroneous claim since most movie reviews are written prior to there being a consensus. If and when Proyas makes another film, he'll have a hard time getting critics on his side. Yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm pretty happy right now. Train Wreck Amy Schumer has become one of the leading ladies of comedy, and she parlayed the success of her TV show into a romantic comedy. In 2015, she headlined Train Wreck, which was well received overall. But one person who wasn't fond of it was Jeffrey Wells, who spent most of his review explaining how the not conventionally attractive and chubby Schumer didn't make for the most convincing rom-com lead. 
he doubled down in a second post where he said the actress wasn't grade A or even B plus material in terms of prettiness. No. Schumer got the last laugh by taking the controversy and turning it into a hysterical Inside Amy Schumer sketch where men determine if she's sexy enough to be on TV. Dude, I can hit the... <laughs> Identity Thief. The box office numbers indicate that audiences love watching Melissa McCarthy on the big screen, but some critics would rather she not be in movies anymore. While reviewing Identity Thief, Rex Reed made his criticism personal by calling McCarthy a female hippo and tractor sized. He felt that McCarthy's weight was used as a gimmick for cheap laughs. McCarthy responded by saying that Reed was in a really bad spot. The reviewer went on to say he had lost many friends to obesity, but that didn't excuse the harshness of his words. Identity Thief was a financial hit, and McCarthy is in the midst of a successful career. Black Swan Film buffs may be familiar with Armin White, a notorious contrarian critic who praises panned films and pans praised films. During the 2011 New York Film Critics Circle Awards dinner, White expressed his displeasure for many of the films the group was honoring, even with the filmmakers of those projects in attendance. One of the films he had disliked was Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan, and the director fought back, saying at the event that White's reviews gave him another reason to not read the New York press. White's outlet. White responded by saying Aronofsky does read him, and because he reads me, he knows the truth. Batman vs Superman – Dawn of Justice The DCEU had a rough year with critics, as Batman vs Superman couldn't live up to the high hopes of many. As the film was picked apart, members of the franchise came to their colleagues' defense. Ray Fisher, who plays Cyborg in Justice League, Instagrammed a meme riffing on a Batman vs Superman scene, where Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne implies that the critics are uniting to wipe out the DC film slate, and it's up to the Justice League to destroy them. This was enough to make many people cringe, since a lot of critics want the movies to be good. Hopefully Justice League is a step in the right direction, and brings people together. Those are just some of the actors and directors who have feuded with critics in their careers. Are there any we missed? You might have missed a couple things, you know. Where do you side on these disagreements? Sound off in the comments section below, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fun videos. Thanks for watching!